make sure no one in this building is untouched it's good to have somebody to pray for you to intercede on your behalf someone who's actually praying for themselves when they pray for you someone who might be touching you tonight who has nothing to gain by your being blessed it's easy to pray for someone who blesses you after you pray for them but it would be wonderful to pray with someone tonight and you have nothing to gain by their being blessed sometimes we pray for people we're actually praying for ourselves praying for our mothers and our fathers praying for our church members just praying for someone who we need something from but I think it would be wonderful just to ask God to bless the person you're holding without any selfish reason without any motivation other than you're wanting to see someone else anointed by God squeeze those hands their father in Jesus name we thank you tonight for all the things you have given we praise you for your presence we glorify you for your being God be God tonight for us be God in our circumstances be God in our situations be God in our emotions be God in our psychological uh, battles that we fight just be our God tonight our Father oh, hallowed be thy name I want you to bless the hands I hold tonight I want you to touch my brother and my sister I want you to move in their families move on their jobs move in their finances move in their spirit move in their church bless their ministries right now oh god i want you to give them the victory that comes from knowing who you are so i press victory in these hands i press anointing in these hands i press power in these hands oh god i press financial blessings in these hands have your way right now break every yoke in the name of jesus and i declare victory tonight in jesus name now loose those hands and give god a praise give me some monitor sound man just a little more monitors if you can give god a praise he's worthy of all of our praises i will bless the lord at all times Ah, oh, bless him, bless him, bless him. Ah, oh, bless his name, bless his name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Surely we honor the Lord tonight and we're very grateful to him just to allow us to be here and to bring us into this very, very special place, this wonderful place that God has ordained for this assembly. And we thank God just for allowing us to be here tonight, for bringing us over the the airways it wasn't that the pilot was so skillful though the plane was in such good condition it's just God's traveling mercies that got us here and we thank God for that amen 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 if you if you came from across the street and you got here safely you have reason to praise and give God glory tonight amen and it's just it's just the gift of God and it's not anything to take for granted it's something to thank the Lord for we honor God tonight for this great retinue of ministry to these great pastors and to all of the clergy ladies and gentlemen and of course to the Honorable Bishop Gilbert Patterson to his wife and his great family amen give God a praise for the man of God ah. And we thank God for the leadership that God has ordained for you. Yeah, great leaders are endangered species. It's hard to find a good leader. It's part of the problem with the world today is we have no leaders. And when God has ordained a leader for you, it is one of the most blessed things that he has ever given. When he gives you a leader who has vision, 
and who has the capacity to put together those things that make those visions come to pass. That's a gift from God. Amen. Anytime God can give you another human being, that's a gift. Now, don't get stiff over in this building now. You all used to shout over next door. And, amen. You used to have a good time over next door. Don't, don't let the size of the building get you nervous. Amen. You can just, you got more room to shout now. Yeah. But leadership, leadership, leadership. God's the only one I know who can take human beings and give them to other human beings. Now, no human being deserves another. <laughs> no human being deserves another. Whenever God gives you somebody, put someone in your life that causes you to be closer to him, you should thank God for that person every day. Amen. You should give God praise for that person every day. And you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be taciturn about it. You shouldn't be reticent. I mean, it should be something that you express freely and openly. And thank God, it's, it's wonderful to thank God for the gifts he gives. And God gives human beings to us to make our lives better. Uh, people have cursed us. Oh yes, you didn't know when you were going out that night that you were going to be on some substance for 20 years. You didn't know that you were just going to have a good time and your friends introduced you to something that left you messed up for at least 10 years of your life. Somebody cursed you just by being in their presence. Sometimes you're hanging out with fellas who have some devious thing in mind. And you didn't know, they didn't tell you. And next thing you end up five years of your life in somebody's prison because you were hanging out with a group of fellas who didn't tell you they were going to rob the liquor store. They cursed you. How many times have you reached for people in relationships? Or how many times have people come after you, just come after you with all the bullions in the world so intense? And you couldn't imagine that they could come after you so intensely and then walk away from you immediately after they got you and left you emotionally twisted for at least two years. People can curse you. Sometimes you're born in a family and no one ever thought that maybe they should have raised you. And the rest of your life you live trying to overcome the abuse of your early life. People curse you. Amen. And it takes God to send someone into your life. To reverse the curse. To break the yoke. And if God has ordained such a person for you, you ought to be thankful to God every day. Amen. It's, it's not anything to be cool about. It's something to be excited about. And, let God look at your neighbor and say, I'm a gift to somebody. They don't know it yet, but I'm a gift to somebody. Amen. I'm a gift to somebody. Everything I've been through, every tear I've cried, every yoke that I've had to shake off my back, everything I've had to overcome is to qualify me just to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. And so... So we honor the Lord tonight for the Honorable Bishop Gilbert Patterson because God has raised him up not only to be a blessing to you and a gift to you here in Memphis, but a gift to all of us all over the country. And we, we, we thank God for God having put together such a vessel and then giving him to us in such a marvelous way. Amen. So if you would just help me, just give God a praise for this great leader. Amen. We're grateful to God for him. I brought some tapes with me. Ministry is ministry that's 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 meaningful is moving from the philosophical to the psychological. 
because that's where the body of Christ has to go. If you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then ministry cannot be philosophical. It has to have a psychological impetus. It has to have a psychological aspect because the only way to be renewed is through your mind. And anything that deals with the mind has to have a psychological twist. Oh, you can argue philosophically all kinds of things. And that's why we're so divided, been divided for a thousand years since Azusa. But anytime you go psychologically, then we all grow because it takes the psychological to change our minds. And when you change your mind, you change your life. So I brought some tapes and most of my ministry is going to be psychologically uh, oriented. I uh, brought the power of the mind and various other things. And if you go to the tape table, the Lord will bless you there, I'm sure. All kinds of things that will make you feel better about yourself, make you feel better about walking with God, make you feel good about you. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes people are single and they, you know, they're alone, they think. Amen. But sometimes you need to be alone so you can find out that you're a lovely person. Amen. Sometimes you need to be alone and find out that God deals with you and all of that good stuff and that God prepares you for somebody. And nobody's qualified for anybody until they're qualified for themselves. Amen. 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 God's working on you sometimes. And so, and so the, the word of God helps us to understand those things. Ah, now tonight in the book of Ephesians, I hope you brought your Bibles with you. In the book of Ephesians tonight, chapter 1. And I would like to consider, I, I would actually like to begin reading at verse 6. But to be contextual, uh, Ephesians, particularly the first chapter, has such long, such long sentences. Uh, so, so, so I want to I want to go to six, but let's begin reading at three, at verse three, so that we might uh, be within the parameters of the sentence. So, so we'd have to read from verse three and read all the way to verse twelve. Now, that's something that English has changed. Old English, they had long sentences, and now we we have real short sentences. That's what the writers do today. But notice now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Ah, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Can you say amen? amen. I want you to notice now verse 11. And he's speaking about all things being in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. And he points out in whom, which is in Christ, we have obtained an inheritance. Touch somebody beside you and tell them I'm ready for my inheritance. I'm ready. Are you ready? The book of Ephesians. It's interesting, I don't always know how, they, how the theologians come to their conclusions. 
But the theologians declare that Ephesians is the most profound book in all the Bible. Uh, sometimes our theologians aren't our evangelists, which means that from an academic point of view, they approach the Bible. But oftentimes, academics without the spirit doesn't give you the impact. But I would give some credence to what they're saying simply because when you consider the book of Ephesians, you understand that it begins outside of time. And the book now is providing us with some insights as to the mind of God prior to our getting here. And he concludes some things. He says that I didn't actually become blessed when I came to church. He points out that I didn't actually become strong when I came to church. I didn't actually become gifted when I came to church. He points out that I was gifted in Christ Jesus before God catabole, before he threw the world into its existence. And so consequently, because of how profound the book is, you will find, and I'm going to the mountain tonight, uh, you find that Paul has to pray. He has to pray for us. That the eyes of our enlightenment be open our understanding be enlightened that God opens us up to the depth because when it comes to what God has done for us we need God to speak to our hearts to open us up to the gigantic blessing that he has bestowed on us because our minds can't grasp it without the help of God and so I would point out that the things God is doing and their significance to us and their influence has to be on our thinking because now if he is doing it and we will not appropriate it to our thinking then we will never know who we are in Christ Jesus significant then that our struggles are over not when our circumstances change but our struggles are over once we understand who we are in Christ Jesus you see it's significant here because much of our battle as the children of God between what is spiritual and what is connected to the spirit of God by faith and what is sensual or what is connected to the world by our senses. See, every child of God is caught between what is spiritual and what is sensual. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved or just how wonderfully saved you are. Your battle is always between your sight and your faith. My sight connects me to my world, to my situation, and to my circumstance. My faith connects me to God. But now God is not seen at any time. So, oftentimes, I am caught between what I believe and what I see. And my sensuality pulls me into expecting to see God in my circumstance. But what God says is, I don't have to show up in your circumstance for you to believe that I'm here. Because the control of my mind is by faith in the things of God to defeat the attitude of Satan who is trying to control me by my senses. 
is here is a difference between someone who is spiritual and someone who is sensual. The spiritual person lives by faith connected to the spirit of God in spite of their circumstance. Whereas the sensual person lives by sight and circumstance and cannot understand the things of God because they are not visible or intellectual or discerned by situation. See, when I walk by faith, I walk by revelation and not by situation. Ah, I hope you're with me tonight. <sighs> I guess I gotta work tonight. And, so, and so, so, so what God is doing here in his word is he's bringing us to understand what has been done for us. And what has been done for us outlines who we are. Because what God has done determines who we are in Christ. He determines our position, he determines our possession, and he determines our responsibility. I cannot have a possession in Christ without being in the right position. And if I have a possession, then I have a responsibility. Because there can be no position without possession, and there can be no possession without responsibility. Uh, are you with me now? I, I'm not responsible to be positioned. I'm responsible after I am positioned. You see, God puts me in a place first, and then he declares because I am in that place, he expects certain attitudes from me. So then my faith has to ignore my situation to determine the viability of my position. I know who I am in spite of what I'm going through. Help me sound man. Yeah, a little more monitors if you can. It, it's significant here because he speaks to my mind and he doesn't change circumstance. See, most of us, we are seeking a God to change situation. But I found out that if God changes me, I can change my situation. Oh, I feel God in this place tonight. You got to help me sound, man. Don't leave me out here. It's important then to understand when he deals with the word chosen, that chosen is what we call in theology an anthropomorphic term. And uh, don't be frightened by that. It simply is a, a term that brings into human cognizance an action that God didn't actually take. It's something that gives us an understanding in our language to describe something about God that we can understand, but it really doesn't work like that. Uh, now, uh, it's like this. If, if, if I go to buy a suit, if I go to buy a suit, I go to choose a suit. And it means that uh, when I go, I have an idea of what I want, but I don't know exactly what I want. I have an idea. And that's why when I go, I go and I search and I look and I see and I go from shop to shop. I know, have you been shopping with someone who, who, who you know they're gonna pick the first thing they, they picked up, but you, you gotta go with them to five or six other places before they come back to the first place. You know, they, they're trying to make up their mind. Now, notice then, I don't know what I'm going to choose, but I go out to choose. And so when I hear that I'm chosen in him before the foundation of the world, run right away, my human cognizance sees God going through the supermarket of souls, deciding who he's going to take. But now, you told me in Sunday school that God is omniscient which means that he has all knowledge, quote unquote, at all times. Uh -huh. Now that means that God has all information at all times, and I'm quoting unquoting times because eternity is not time. And you're telling me then that God always had all information from his beginning, and he has no beginning, uh, which means from his concept, and he has no concept, he has all information. 
which means there is never a time quote unquote time in the existence of God that God didn't know everything all right so then when God knew himself and he always knew himself he always knew who he would choose uh, so when did he choose then uh, uh, y'all with me or am I by myself uh, come on next should I go over that again <laughs> when did he choose if he always knew there is no time in the existence of God that he doesn't have all information so which means when he knew he was God and he always knew he was God he always knew you would be here saved tonight that means you are in the mind of God as old as God is and God is ageless so why are you worried about how your life is going to come out when God already knew uh, I feel God in this house tonight uh, you've got to understand then that it's anthropomorphic because it gives description to an action in human language that doesn't take place in glory because he always knew you he knows those who are his own and there's no question about that he does not get new information that's why the gifts and callings of God are without repentance oh yes church folk will tell you if you don't use it you lose it well that's church folk talking <laughs> but 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 God does not give gifts and take them back and the reason is before he gave the gift he had all the information about what you would do with the gift and if he wasn't gonna give it he wouldn't have given it in the first place oh I feel God here that's why that's why you don't judge your salvation by your gifts you judge your salvation by your relationship with God or your fruit because you can have a gift and go to hell uh. anyhow when you understand this then we consider the relationships of chosen predestinated and in the text also the word accepted we are chosen in him we are predestinated us unto by Jesus Christ and hath made us accepted in the beloved now this is God's action this is what God is doing this this is not what you're doing this is what God has decided to do and there's another portion of text that says for his good pleasure I propose to you that nothing is as sure as my salvation nothing is as sure as my God saving me why because salvation is as sure as Jesus's blood it is as certain as God's love it is as powerful as God's omnipotence it is as great as God's immutability there is no devil in hell that can stop God from bringing to salvation those that he chose before the foundation of the world oh God I don't know I know church people have a tendency of reducing God and holding him hostage to how they feel or their attitude God is not held hostage by your attitude he never has to back up because of any human being deciding to take him or leave him if God wants you there is nothing you can do about it but come to God I wish somebody would help me in this place amen don't 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 get carried away with the power of your ability to decide to or not to when it comes to God can I just digress a minute God can chasten you so intensely that you will forget that he loves you oh, oh yes God God can whip you to the edge of your mind and for anybody who has really been chastened by God I know you don't want to admit it but I have 
God has to sustain your mind while he is chastening you or you would lose your mind under his hand. Oh God, and then he'll chasten you. He'll chasten you until he has to send somebody to remind you that he still loves you in the middle of what you're going through. Oh, he knows how to get your attention. Oh, and so you understand then that his grace then becomes the substratum by which he chooses. And here is the freedom that God has to have. He has to have the freedom to not allow his justice to stop him from dealing with me. So what he does is he brings grace. And grace brings Jesus to the cross. Now notice that God does not deal with you any longer directly by grace he deals with you directly by justice now because Jesus took care of your sins on Calvary now understand this have you ever figured out why the Bible says he's just and faithful to forgive when you confess your sins the reason he's just and faithful is Jesus Christ has already died for your sins and it is not fair for two people to die for one set of sins are you with me my sins have been taken care of by Jesus so when I acknowledge my sin the blood of Jesus washes me of my sin so God cannot exact my life for my sin when Jesus or already died for my sin so grace uses Calvary to set God free to deal with me and once God is free to deal with me there is no devil in hell that can stop me from my inheritance oh I feel God in here let's go to the next level now through grace then I've got the virtue of his power and predestinated now is another interesting thing because now he deals with me not only as a technon but he deals with me as a huios, an adult son. So now the exceeding riches of his grace accepts me in his presence and he loved me now as the son is loved. So he loves me with the same intensity that he loves Jesus Christ and makes me a joint to air. Can I take it to the next level? So the love now becomes an integral process, a part of the process without question. That's verse 5 if you will. So now it's in love that we associate being chosen. He loves me and he chooses me. It's his freedom to choose me. You don't have to like me. You don't have to deal with me but God does not deal with you to deal with me he chooses me because that's what he wants to do do you remember the text where he says it's his your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom that's what he wants to do he wants to bless me that I might give glory to the power of his grace oh God I feel this thing in here tonight you see many of us are of the opinion that if we project to people that we have always been real good that makes us important because church people have an attitude about people who tell the truth about where they're coming from do you know the church is the last place that you can get up and tell folk what you used to be I mean folk will look at you funny if you ever tell them where you're coming from I mean they'll stop their children from talking to you if, I mean they'll just oh no you can't deal with them and and, and the, the, the fact of the matter is it looks like if God has actually forgiven you and if God has changed you then you ought to believe he has changed me I mean if you really 
really believe God has turned your life around, that you really believe that he turned the person's life around who's sitting right by you. Most people want to give the impression that they have been good all their lives and they deserve to be saved. Oh God, I wish I could preach this thing tonight. Do you think for one minute, with all the stuff that I've been through in my life, that you can bring that little boy up here to talk to me? There's absolutely nothing that innocence can say to me. I need somebody to talk to me that's been to hell and back. Uh, that's who I need. And what I have discovered is where you have been before God brought you in does not disqualify you from talking in the house of God. In fact, if you haven't been through anything, you are not qualified to deal with me. Oh, I feel God in this place. Oh yeah, I know you want to give the impression you didn't get in that bed. I know you want to give the impression you have never thought of going with somebody who was married. I know you want to give the impression that you have always had one love, one husband. You have never stolen anything in your life. And so when you walked into church, God owed to save you. Wrong. God saved you because that's what he wanted to do. And oh God, I feel it in here. Uh, I'm going to have a little church here tonight. Uh, pull on somebody and say, he's talking to you tonight. Uh, there ain't no stiffness in this house tonight. Uh, can, can I put it to you another way? Because uh, I want to reach you where you are. Sit down for a minute. We, we got to talk here tonight. Uh, we just got to talk. Uh, it's important to understand this. Uh, when, you, when, when, you, when you grasp where God has put you, you see it in different light. And this is why he's giving me Ephesians 1. Most people in here, when they move into relationship with anybody, they think that it's something about them that makes people gravitate towards them. That's why you dress the way you do. That's why you enhance yourself and embellish your physical pulpitude because you expect by the way you look or by what you have that people gravitate towards you. I'm sure you've lived long enough to understand this that no matter what you give a man or give a woman that's not enough to keep them. Uh -huh. I, 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 think, I think maybe somebody's mature enough to understand this. You sometimes can't figure out how he could leave you for that little no woman down the street who has absolutely nothing to offer. Have you ever wondered that? Now, you, you gave him a car, you gave him a house, you gave him rent, you gave him pocket money, and he just left. Now, when the relationship was falling apart, because you believed that it was something you did to attract him, you believe that it's something you're not doing to lose him. You see, this is the tendency because if I believe you've come because I am so macho and I am so rich and I am so debonair, then it must be because I'm losing something why you're trying to leave. So as the relationship begins to fall apart, I begin to intensify my drive to keep you. And I just cannot understand how it is with all I'm doing, I'm still on the losing side. But my dear person, what you got to understand is people make a decision to stay or to leave. The facts are very clear. Just look at who he's with today. He's with somebody with five babies and you don't have one. He's with somebody that never gave him a dime and you gave him everything. So the bottom line is it's not about you. So you might as well pick yourself up, clean yourself off, stop recriminating and go on with your life. 
because people make decisions to stay or to leave. The reason I know that my salvation is sure is because I had nothing to offer my God. When he decided to call me, it wasn't because I was so great, it was because he is so good. So I don't have to worry about shutting my mouth about where he brought me from. Because you don't have to accept me, he's already accepted me, and you don't have an inheritance to give me. I feel like having church in here. Oh God, touch your neighbor and say, I'm ready for mine. Everything that God promised me, I'm ready for it now. And I don't care who likes it or who don't like it. I am ready for what's mine. I feel a little churchy in here tonight. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm going to get it too. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it sure as I'm here. You got to grasp this thing and understand it. Uh, you can't make God. Nobody makes God. God is God all by himself. It's what he decides to do. So all his actions then are in love. His gifts for us and his processes in us are loved base. And so we have to put love then with predestination. And that word coming from proharazo simply means a boundary or a limit. Touch somebody says a limit to everything you go through. God's got a limit. And, and what he does here is he marks out a boundary or he marks out limits of any place or anything. When it's used now of people, it means to put a limit upon a person to determine his destiny. And so that means that in my life, God sets boundaries that I cannot surpass or go over. He sets boundaries that the devil can only come so far and no further. When I consider the things that I have been through, I should be rocking in a rocking chair right about now crazy as I don't know what. But God sets limits. Oh, I feel it in here. Because he's got the power to sell the devil so far and no further. I want you to teach him a lesson. So I'll allow you enough freedom to take him almost to the limit of his mind. Then I'll hold his mind in the power of my hand because I'm not trying to make him crazy. I'm trying to get him right. I feel like preaching in here tonight. Oh, some of you going through some stuff right now. You ought to let the devil know I know what's going on. God is just pushing me to the limit of my situation so I can understand he's getting ready to put me in a whole new season. I feel it in here. There's a limit to what God will allow the devil to do. That's why you don't worry about people. And that's why the Spirit of God gives you meekness. Because meekness says, I know that God understands what's happening. And when he gets ready, he'll change what's going on around me. Oh God, I feel it in here. I'm trying to behave. But I found out that when God is not working on my circumstance, he's working on me. And when he works on me, he does not have to change my circumstance. He gives me the power to move in the middle of it because I realize he's got boundaries. You can only push me, but so far. You can only talk about me, but for so long. You can only mistreat me, but but for a season and then God says enough and when God says enough things are getting ready to turn 
in your life. I feel it. Hold that organ. I'll blow a fuse. You've got to understand this. And so now when he says pro, he fixes it to the verb. And we have before. So what he does now is he sets limits before. So then that's why he can declare that he marks out a boundary or a limit or a thing or a person previous to them ever coming into this world. Because whatever God does, he does in eternity now he gives us his word for him to tell us what God has already done so that while I'm going through difficult situations I already know in my spirit by faith that my situation is not my lasting condition because my spirit is already connected to God's spirit and I'm not walking by situations I'm going by revelation so I can tell the devil in my situation I already know how I'm coming out so I don't have to wait till the battle's over I can pray I can praise him right now I feel God in this place touch somebody say I'm ready for mine uh, touch somebody else it's been a long time coming but I got a feeling my inheritance it's about to break loose you got to understand the matter to be considered here do I have a little more time oh, let's just sit down a minute I, you got to understand to be considered and emphasize it isn't always who are the objects of this predestination but what are they predestined to because it's significant to know this that in the middle of what I'm going through I have to have a word from the Lord because I only have a future because of God's word that's all my future my whole future is God's word when I get up this morning I don't want to know what my situation is all I want to know is is there a word from the Lord because when I walk by faith I don't walk by what I see I walk by what he says so he brings me Ephesians to tell me that the situation you're in is not your end because if you're still crying God's not through yet if you're still hurting God's not through yet if you're still depressed God's not through yet if you're still broke God's not through yet if you're still down God's not through yet because when God gets through you'll have your inheritance oh I feel it in here oh God I've, you got to help me tonight Lord shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and tell you got tell them you're about to be blessed hang on in there He appointed it beforehand. And that's why God, the power of God is evident. Can I get just a little philosophical here? And then swing it into the psychological. You see, you never see God. You never see him. This, this is the interesting thing about walking with God. Is that when you deal from a spirit to spirit by faith. He does things in your spirit. That your mind can't grasp. That's why he can give you peace. Which passeth all understanding. That's not situational peace. That's spiritual peace. Because your situation is of such. That there's no way for you to have peace except you're hooked to the spirit of God so now what God has to do in order to show you that he is the one working is he has to tell you what's going to happen before it comes to pass so the writer says he speaks things that are not as though they are 
because that's the only way to connect you to him because you never see him you don't see him fixing the credit to work out the car you don't see him touching your body to heal it you don't see him arranging this tall dark and handsome man or putting together this voluptuous feminine pulchritude you don't see him but he gives you a vision oh, I wonder are you with me and vision is by spirit and then he marks out your boundaries so when you would go too far he steps you back in and when you would go off he puts a boundary to stop you and so when the devil would destroy you he puts a boundary to stop the devil so then he declares a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord uh, give somebody a high five say I can't miss my blessing because God is ordering my steps I feel mm, I feel shouting oh, glory I gotta let you a little more before we have a little church in here shake somebody's hand say well, what the hell I've been going through my inheritance is nearby the devil knows it's coming he's mad as he can be Feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, the Spirit of the Lord is in here. And that's why we've got to understand the steps. Because He's already done it. Everything that God is going to give you, He has already given it to you. It's already yours before the foundation of the world. So why don't I have it? Because it's not my season yet. Are y'all with me? He decides the gift and he decides when to give it. And he puts you together first. So that's why the text says he marks out beforehand. He sets limits. He predestinates and he holds it together. And so now he brings us in when he gets ready. Because no man comes except the Father draw. He's got to draw you in. He draws you out of cocaine. Draws you out of the wrong bed. Draws you out of a mental institute. Draws you out of yourself. And sets a time when you have to come to him. Can I talk about God for a minute? He arranges your life in a way that the things that would have kept you from him they'll break your heart every time. If some of you in here had gotten out of life what you chose to get, you would not be in the church tonight. But God messed up your plans in order to draw you in and set you where you wanted you to be. Cause some stuff to break and it broke supernaturally because the way the thing was set up it should have never gone wrong but just when you thought you had it fixed God said this is not my plan and then he turns around and tells you after he messes up your plan that all things work together I feel God in here I can mess it up and not break it I can break it and it still work for you I can turn it and it still keep you straight That's mine And I've got to get what's mine Can I go just a little more? Then I'm going to close Give me just a few more minutes You've got to understand the object then Is that he brings us as joint ears with Christ And Paul does not use the Greek thought He uses the Roman practice And when a Roman gives his son something he gets the liabilities as well as the assets and that's where you are tonight you've got the liabilities and you've got the assets but while you're struggling through the liability of being in 
in this life. You've got the asset of being a child of God. And nothing the devil throws at you is not controlled by God. And that's why you keep your head up. You keep your praise up. Because you know down in your spirit that even though you can't explain it intellectually, everything you're going through is just bringing you one step closer to what God promised you 10 years ago. I got to preach it in here. Don't lose your faith. Don't feel neglected. But in the middle of your storm, you praise him for what he's already done. Because it leads you to what he is going to do. And never as a child of God, tell somebody I don't have it. And close that sentence. You always say, I don't have it yet. Can I preach like I feel it? You never say, when somebody asks, did you get the house? You never say, I don't have it. Don't stop there. Always remember, I've got an inheritance. And God already knows what I need. And he already has it in storage. While he's working on building me up. So when you ask me, do I have it? My answer is, I don't have it yet. Do you have a new job? I don't have it yet. Well, Bishop, are you married? I'm not married yet. Can somebody say it's always a yet to it? Because it's on the way. It's on the way. Because I've got an inheritance special delivered from glory. And I rose to tell the devil, it ain't nothing you can do about it. Because God has ordained it. And it's mine. Shake your neighbor's hands in my joy. It's mine. Victory. It's mine. Power. It's mine. Everything God promised. It's mine. And I don't have to wait till I see it in the natural. I've already got it in the spirit. My faith says just a few more days and everything God promised is going to be released. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm ready for my inheritance. Every dream I've dreamt, every vision God gave me has kept me in the midst of the storm. Y'all pray for me tonight, but I feel like preaching. If I didn't have a dream, if I didn't have a vision, I 
bless you. If you're ready, get something in your hand. Run out of your seat and sow a seed tonight. Tell the devil you're a liar. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for victory in my home. I'm ready for power in my life. I'm ready. God promised it. God said he'd do it. Ready. Ready. I'm ready. I feel the power of God. Touch somebody say I'm chosen. I'm predestinated. That's why the devil don't like me. That's why the devil's after me. Cause God's got his hand on me. That's why the devil wanna destroy you. Cause God's got his hand all over you. Ready? Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to lift him up. Somebody ought to rejoice. Ready for my inheritance. I'm ready for the next level. Tell your neighbor I'm ready for the next level in my life. I'm shaking off some stuff. Moving to another height. Moving to another place. Moving to another. God showed me in my vision. And I know it's mine. It's mine. Oh, bless his name. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to lift him up. I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Chosen in him. Predestinated in him. Accepted in him. And it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Rush down here, we're going to pray in a minute. You have been blessed. And it seems like Satan has read your dossier. It's like he's got a file on all of us. And when he feels like you are God's chosen, he comes after you with everything that he's got. Yes, he does. One of the signs that Jesus was near was when the onlookers tried to stop blind Bartimaeus from hollering Jesus. He didn't see Jesus, he just sensed his presence. But when they tried to stop him, he knew that Jesus was nearby. I'm getting ready to pray because God's changing your season. It's in his hand. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. He sets the boundaries. And it's your time now. Ah, glory, glory. Ah, I want you just to raise your hands to God. All over this place. You remember that vision? That vision was not born out of your circumstance. Because there was nothing in your circumstance that could have seen what you saw. That vision came out of your spirit. It was God. It's been a rough road. You've come through a lot. But the vision never went away. It stayed right there. You've been disappointed, you've been discouraged. But that vision never went away. 
it never died the fire wouldn't go out and the reason it's not going out is because God is getting ready to bring it to pass so your joy will be complete in the name of Jesus I receive your word tonight I receive your word over the disappointments I receive your word over the situations I receive your word in spite of the conspiracy and the attack of the enemy and I put your word in my heart tonight that I will not sin against you with my mouth but oh God I will praise you because my vision says it's coming to pass and so now Lord as you move through this building we have planted a seed that declares that this will grow and it will come to pass and I claim it right now for every person in this room that that vision that dream that goal will come to pass so right now Lord we're going into the rest of this week expecting a miracle tomorrow we're looking for it in the name of Jesus and we're praising you for it right now right now right now it's done somebody holler amen so let it be amen amen Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, if you would stop where you are for just three minutes, we'll dismiss you in an orderly fashion. beautiful message to the body of Christ tonight but who knows there may be someone here totally not conscious of your inheritance in Christ you didn't know until tonight that God has already chosen you before the foundation of the world and has a plan for your life. Hallelujah. If you are here and have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're already standing, I want you to just lift up your hands if you want to give him your life. You're not saved. If you're seated already, stand up and lift up your hand so that I'll know you're there. There's one that want to give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not responsible to make you come. But we are responsible to give you an opportunity. Hallelujah. I do not see a hand, everybody standing. Some of you still got to run to get ahead of the crowd. Why don't you wait until everybody goes and then get behind the crowd? Everybody standing. Eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Evangelist Lietta Van Zant will lead the prayer ministry. God worked with her so beautifully last year. And instead of just the normal hour of prayer from nine to 10, I gave her the liberty for these two days, this morning and tomorrow morning, to begin earlier. For there are some persons who can only identify 
with the deliverance prayer ministry. So those two hours from eight until 10 will be the time of prayer. 10 o'clock praise and worship conducted by evangelist Kim Langford. And then our speaker tomorrow morning in the 10 o'clock ministry will be this dynamic young man from Atlanta, Georgia, Pastor Evangelist Dennis Martin. Then we'll have our classes, lunch, the singles ministry, and tomorrow night will be the closing session with the one and only prophetess Juanita Bynum. And we're going out with a bang tomorrow night. It's been a glorious time in the Lord. Make sure you get in on the last day. Am I forgetting anything? Reach over and catch somebody by the hand. Bishop David Grayson is going to come and pray the benediction prayer. Father God, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful time spent in your divine presence. You blessed us once again tonight, and we must tell you thank you. Oh, we must tell you thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. This man of God. Oh, God, you blessed us. Your word was rich. And we give you glory. Continue to bless Bishop Patterson. Sister Patterson. The wonderful staff. This marvelous ministry. Bless Bishop Jones. Strengthen his body. Bless us all, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise your name forever. We praise your name forever. And as we leave this place, we can certainly say we have been with Jesus and it has been a glorious evening. In your wonderful name we pray. We lift our hands and our voices and say thank God. And again, we ask you, don't get loud. Reverence the house of God. Walk around the corridors. There is valuable ministry material from so many of the personalities who have come to minister to us. Music ministry.